Welcome everyone. This is our second webinar for the CMOC, sorry, not the CMOC, CMOC for the Muscle Melt uh, CMOC. Uh, it's our next iteration of the CMOC after our CMOC CMOC. And uh, this is for our UK uh, participants. So in particular with us tonight, well, tonight for us, but it's actually uh, in the morning for the UK. We have Ian. Yeah, 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 nice. Well, 10.30 a.m. for you, 9.30 p.m. for us, yeah. So what's the weather like over there? Um, well, I was up quite early this morning, and as the sun came up, it was uh, foggy. So there was a, a nice sort of fog over the trees and whatever. But now it's it's brilliantly sunshiny. So it's it's a very nice day, a very pleasant day. That's I guess if you looked out the window, it would be dark. <laughs> yes, yes, it would be. Yeah, not too cold, but uh, it's definitely dark. Yes. So um, you're you're in Coventry, uh, Ian. Do you want to just introduce yourself for those who, who yeah, sure. Um, um, don't know introduce you? myself for those who don't know me. My name's uh, Ian Upton. Um, I'm in Coventry, UK, and I work here at the university. Um, my role here is with academic development, but with a very particular hat on, which is where I support our lecturing staff um, really to create great student experience encouraging them you know sort of step away from the powerpoint so to speak and and engage in in sort of active learning and of course uh, the particular speciality is um using technology to enhance that so um my background is in art and design so i'm sort of very pro the sort of adobe creative cloud kind of thing so i'm quite active in the adobe arenas and whatever and at the moment um very pro Adobe Spark, if you haven't seen it. So that's the that's the sort of flavour of the month over here that's uh, that's going down. So I know you've had a bit of a uh, play with Adobe Spark um, to create your online portfolio. Are you still doing that, Ian? Well, I'm, I'm having a sort of bit of debate with it. I'm, I'm in one part of me wants to use Spark because I think it will be interesting to try. The other part of me, I've just been playing with. Um, a new um, WordPress template. So the sort of, you know, sort of, do I do it this way? Do I do it that way? Um, I think just from that conversation there, I think I'm actually probably going to have a go with Spark, because, uh, yeah, I think um, as a as a free tool, and a tool which is ridiculously easy to use and incorporate things like video and and links and and, and whatever, then um, yeah, I'm going to have a go with that. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I think it also looks a little bit different. It's quite cool from what I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, for those who haven't seen it, let me. Um, it's it's all designed to work on um, mobile telephones. So mobile telephones, mobiles. Oh, and my phone's going to go out of charge. So this might be a very short demo, but we'll have a have a little bit of a look. Um, this is the kind of thing that uh, I produce and get our lecturers to produce. Just bear with me one moment. There we go. Come on, you can do it. So I don't know if you can see that. It's for producing resources that go on your phone which you can then uh, produce really very, very nice, very slick media sort of rich um, uh, resources that I think is powerful that you can actually put in the hands of your students. So if you've got a lecture theater there or a room full of people, um, you can actually stick this stuff on their hand. You know, they can click links and do things. I link it in with things like Google Docs so people can sort of do interactive stuff. And um, anyway. My view is it's a it can be, it's a very powerful tool in the armory. Yeah, yeah, I, I like it. It's um, I don't use it much myself, but I tend to use um, WordPress. But that's mainly just because I've used it for a long time. But um, I think it's huge potential on Adobe Spark, and uh, it's it's very very um, visual, very creative, uh, and as yeah. you say, free. So uh, you know, it's worth a go. Um, yeah, so normally we do do recommend um, people check out uh, WordPress. If they're um, starting an online portfolio or um, hub for their profiles, but um, surely, um, you know, Adobe Spark I think is a very viable alternative. Yeah, I mean, just a couple of other things on Spark. Um, at the moment, um, Adobe are doing a fantastic offer for um, education, so you can get a full a version of it for your institution for free which gives you online storage space, which is quite useful, but also the ability to brand so that um, you can actually make your resources um, look how you want them to within limits. And it strips out all of the made with Adobe Spark kind of adverts, which is which is really, really nice. The other thing is that the learning curve on it, if I compared Spark to WordPress, now to be fair, we you are 
subverting what Spark is meant to do by turning it into a portfolio. Um, and you may see me fail dismally over the next couple of weeks, but it'll be interesting to see how it goes. But um, in terms of the learning curve, um, I run some light bite sessions, which will feature in my um, uh, portfolio and stuff, and maybe we talk here a little bit about, which are, which are sessions that I run, which are very short sessions, and I can get people up and running with Adobe Spark quite literally within less than 15 minutes, and then uh, they're up and running, where I think with WordPress, unless you're a bit of a techie, um, it's it's the, the learning curve is, is a little bit steeper, but uh, there we go. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think particularly um, creating menus for the first time is not very intuitive in WordPress, and you can get uh, horrendously uh, um, you know, stuck trying to create your menu, st menu structure in WordPress. Um, so yeah, back to the uh, the CMUK, and we're, what we're really wanting to do and explore over the six weeks uh, really is creating an online profile, so an online professional profile um, for academics to showcase their um, teaching and learning practice, their research, um, a way of um, creating an international community practice and collaborating, collaborating with other educators like my educators around the world, just like we're doing right here, um, Ian, you and, you and myself. And um, that can be very powerful because it can build into, um, you know, long-term uh, collaboration. Yeah. So, um, you know, I've been over to Coventry a number of times now and, yes. you know, eventually it'd be good to get you over to New Zealand, actually. Oh, I'd be up for that. I'd, I'd come and share a <laughs> coffee with you over there. Yeah, yeah, come and have some real coffee. Mm. Actually, there's a, that, what's, just, what's that name of that coffee place in Coventry that we've been to? Uh, it actually does quite good coffee. I think we went to a couple of places, but it's Serrano's uh, we went to, which was an Italian place. And yeah, the other, any other ones that I remember is Costa, actually, but that's, that's probably fairly international. <laughs> no, there was another one. With, um, just, just to interrupt. Um, I, this is sort of very, very nuts and bolts here, but I do have the washing machine running in the background, so um, hopefully my voice is coming over in a reasonable way, not being drowned out. It seems to be filtering it out. I can't hear it, so that's good. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Must be the uh, built-in noise correction, uh, cancellation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, initially this, this is week one, and so we're just trying to get people set up and started. Um, so for anyone watching, it's the key tools we're using to collaborate because we are trying to encourage an international collaboration uh, is, uh, is Twitter is one of the key key tools because of the asynchronous yes. communication. Because um, as you can see here, I'm almost ready for bed and Ian's um, still you know up and active and getting into the rest of the day. Um, so an asynchronous tool is, is much more fl uh, flexible than a synchronous uh, tool for the international collaboration. Um, and I think there's a lot of benefits in using Twitter as well. The other yeah. tools are, are obviously creating your online hub profile, so um, WordPress or Adobe Spark or Blogger or whatever you want to choose, but a home base online that you can share and you can get people to, um, uh, you know, give comments and feedback on, on your progress and your work. Um, so Ian's just popped up his Twitter address there. Um, and um, my, my Twitter is Tom Cochran, T-H-O-M-C-O-C-H-R-A-N-E. You can find me on Twitter. And Ian is, uh, what was that again, Ian? It was um, Ian Upton, so CU. Ian Upton, CU. So it's Ian Upton, Coventry University. Yeah, yeah. So um, if you want to follow some people, um, there's Ian and myself to start with, for anyone who's watching us. Feel free to uh, follow along and um, tweet us and... You know, you never know, we might tweet back. <laughs> um, and uh, the other tool that we're using is a uh, Moodle discussion forum. Now we've started using a Moodle discussion forum mainly because we used to use Google Plus communities, um, mm. but uh, that's all shut down. So uh, it was a great tool for this sort of uh, community that we're trying to achieve because it wasn't locked into any particular institution. We didn't have to share loggers and passwords to get people on board. Um, but we had to find an alternative, so we've gone with a self-hosted Moodle and uh, made that public. But um, via um, registration uh, participation, um, people can only post and, and comment once they've been enrolled. So we do need people to do the sign-up form, which is on the WordPress hub. And uh, once we've got your email, we can then sign you in. So let me just quickly screen share 
show you that just in case you're not quite sure what we're talking about here. Yeah, that would be useful. I just went through it this morning, actually, so I have posted a, a hello world, but uh, it's useful to see. So, Tom, just to clarify then, uh, before we were using the Google Hangouts, this time we're going to do all our discussions on the um, on the forum here. Yeah, so before the discussion forum was um, Google+, Plus, and uh, now it's um, the Moodle discussion forum, which we've set up as a social discussion forum for anyone enrolled it is public so anyone can read it uh, you can see some of the posts that we've got here we're really just getting people to introduce themselves we've got a group of midwives here at uh, AUT um, in New Zealand and um, so there's one of them introducing themselves and a few people have posted a couple of little brief intro videos so we've got a section there called intro introduction so if I click on there you can see some of the, the videos from various participants um, we have a video from one of our paramedic lecturers, just a very short, brief one, introducing herself. Um, a couple of our um, longer-term members who have been involved in several of our CMOOCs, you might recognise them, uh, Ian. There's uh, yeah. Yeah. Ron and Amanda, and they've done a little video there with uh, face swaps. So uh, it's kind of uh, quite <laughs> hilarious to see because that's kind that's of a, a mashup. Weird, isn't it? Yeah. Of, of Amanda and Laurent and the same over there. So it's... it's, it's uh, I'm, so, I'm seeing a trend here, Tom. Up. People that are, dis are disguising themselves in various ways. I notice you're, the previous person higher up appears to have applied a, a sort of cartoon filter to themselves. Yeah, so, yeah. I think uh, I'm particularly I'm, for, for people who the first time they're taking a video, um, having some form of filter or avatar makes them feel a bit more comfortable. Yeah. Or as uh, in the case of Amanda and and, and people, uh, just looking like somebody completely different. <laughs> yeah. So there you can see the the what they actually look like. Um, they are swapped around because that's that's uh, Laurent with Amanda's face, and that's Amanda um, Amanda with Laurent's face, and there's Laurent and there's Amanda. Uh, but uh, it's it's quite quite a freaky sort of a look, but uh, it, was, it was quite fun. Uh, and then we just got a couple of. Um, other people that have shared them with uh, with the group, and here's a photo of some of our participants from our midwifery group um, here at mm -hmm. AUT as well. Um, so they're quite excited getting on board. It's quite new for them, um, quite adventurous for them to start sharing online. Uh, it's not something they've really done before. So just encourage people who do join, um, introduce yourself somehow. Uh, a little video would be great, just to give us a, a bit of a sense of uh, connection and community and uh, do that on this forum so the forum link is community.sotel.nz -E you can either access that on any web browser or if you like you can download the free Moodle app to your um, mobile device and then log in via that same uh, address community.sotel.nz so um, to actually post and comment you do need to send us your email address so we can enroll you, and you do that through the WordPress Hub site. So this is our hub for the CMOOC. This is mossamilk.wordpress.com. And I guess what we're trying to do is, in some way, kind of model the use of some of the tools that we're recommending. So this is, we have an outline of the activities that we're looking at over the six weeks. And you can see we're week one. It's basically just set up and getting people to uh, enroll in Moodle, uh, create the WordPress site, or in Ian's case, he's going to do Adobe Spark, uh, and get Twitter going and, and start getting used to using a hashtag if you haven't used Twitter before. So the hashtag is hash mm. <clears throat> Um So yeah, that's that's kind of where we're at at the moment. It's just trying to establish the community, get people having um, a, a, a bit of a, a play with the tools, set them up, and then start to introduce themselves to the community. So I'll just stop screen sharing now. So there we go. So any questions on that, Ian? Um, no, really. It's, it's very, very straightforward. In terms of the structure of this um, CMOOC, is it, are we going to be covering the, the different sections of the, of the CMOOC application, or is it more no, about... No, not directly, no. So unlike... Back and looking at them. Yeah, yeah. So with the CMOLT CMOOC, it was directly mapped to the CMOLT portfolio. Uh, whereas with the Mossamelt, it's it's more about creating your online identity, creating your community. Um, and you can use all that material to help build up your CMOLT portfolio, 
but it's not uh, the the main goal of the of this particular yeah. scenic. I'm with you. Cool. Yeah. So there we go. So each week we just have a bit of a, a look at um, various tools that we can use, explore them, and over those six weeks, hopefully people will start to build up a really good professional academic portfolio online. Yeah, sounds excellent. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, that's kind of um, all we had in line for today, so we might as well keep it nice and short. Uh, is there anything else that you wanted to discuss at all, Ian? No, that's that's absolutely clear. I'm, I mean, I'm actually just chuffed that I've managed to get my new Mac laptop connecting and doing video, given how given the security settings on Safari. So the fact I'm actually able to have this conversation is a huge achievement. But, uh, <laughs> but apart from that, uh, the tour around and looking at the um, the various bits is is really really cool. So yeah, thanks for that, Tom. Okay. And um, yeah, if anyone is watching this and wants to join us live next week, we do post the link in the discussion forum on Moodle um uh, about 10 minutes before the actual hangout so if you want to join us live check that link and jump in so we'll see you all next week i'm going to stop the broadcast now thanks again okay. bye bye